The first shutdown notice came from a warehouse outside Rotterdam. Not a political memo, just a missing shipment label that said rare earth source unverified. Within hours, crates bound for ASML vanished from tracking systems, held at Chinese ports under the new 0.1% rule. Every lithography component with even a trace of Chinese rare earths now needed state approval. Production floors went silent, technicians staring at machines worth more than fighter jets, waiting for materials trapped by an invisible clause in Beijing's registry. It wasn't sabotage, it was precision. One new rule, and the world's most advanced technology just ran out of permission to exist. Traders in Amsterdam read that update against a second line from the same week. China produces more than 90% of the world's processed rare earths and rare earth magnets, the very materials embedded across chip-making tools. ASML's finance chief Roger Dassin told reporters on October 15th that the company had inventory and alternatives for the short term, but the next three years would depend on trade remaining open. The company also disclosed that Chinese orders represented 42% of ASML's third quarter machine sales. A separate note from Washington and Seoul sharpened the terms. Reuters summarized that the new regime covers equipment or research for logic chips at 14 nanometers and below and memory at 256 layers and above, with license applicants evaluated individually. South Korea's industry ministry said it was reviewing details to limit the impact on its firms that rely on high-end memory equipment. The policy design explicitly includes foreign producers using Chinese materials or technology, even when no Chinese seller is party to the transaction. Within days, analysts stitched the policy into a wider supply picture. Alex Partners estimated last month that China controls up to 70% of global rare earth mining, 85% of refining capacity, and around 90% of alloy and magnet production, concentrations that magnify any licensing regime's reach well beyond China's borders. Reuters framed the numbers as a practical constraint for industrial users already drawing down stockpiles after earlier curbs in 2025. Market desks then turned to the Netherlands for the second shock. The Dutch government used emergency legal powers to take control of Nexperia, the Chinese-owned chipmaker headquartered in Nijmegen, citing risks to economic security. The move did not transfer ownership, but gave the Hague authority to reverse or block decisions at the company. A Dutch court ruling suspended Wing Tech's chief from his Nexperia role and placed control of most shares under a court-appointed manager. Reuters dated the intervention to October 13th and detailed the court's measures the same week. Beijing's response unfolded in parallel. Reuters noted that China's new rare earth controls arrived as part of a broader escalation that included added equipment and processing technologies on export lists, with timing that increased Beijing's leverage ahead of leader-level talks. In this context, rare earth licensing is not a single gate but a mesh specific elements restricted, processing steps listed, defense end-users excluded, and sensitive chip thresholds flagged for extra screening. Why it matters operationally was voiced by ASML's Dassin, who said the company was prepared for short-term restrictions but emphasized the medium-term risk if trading channels narrow. That caution reflected a straightforward dependency high-precision optics, motors, and positioning systems rely on magnets and polishing compounds where Chinese refiners dominate global supply. The company's sales mix underscored exposure. Nearly half of orders in the quarter went to Chinese customers, while management guided for flat sales in 2026, despite an AI-driven order book. Across the Atlantic, the Wall Street Journal reported on October 9th that the new rules would even require companies to seek Beijing's approval if Chinese rare earth content accounts for at least 0.1% of a product's value, a micro-threshold that, if enforced, would drag many lithography subassemblies into the paperwork. The journal framed the requirement as nearly unprecedented in scope for a materials control regime. Policy is rarely static and the tempo shifted again this week. Reuters reported today that China suspended bans on exports of gallium, germanium, and antimony to the United States. Moves read by diplomats as part confidence building, part calibration amid broader negotiations. European officials, via multiple reports, also welcomed steps toward easing or delaying some rare earth restrictions as talks continued. These signals complicate any straight-line forecast licensing rules can tighten in one channel while easing in another. In the Netherlands, the Nexperia case also showed how controls can invite counter-controls. After weeks of pressure from European manufacturers and a lot of diplomatic back and forth, Reuters cited Bloomberg reporting that the Dutch government was prepared to shelve its order, limiting Nexperia's corporate decisions if chip shipments from China resumed under exemptions. That kind of conditional posture really illustrates a feedback loop. Domestic security measures can trigger supply retaliation that, in turn, forces policy trade-offs just to keep industrial production running. 
For the chip equipment trade, the immediate exposure sits not just at ASML's end stage assembly, but throughout a supplier web that includes motors, stages, optics, lasers, vacuum pumps, and metrology. Reuters October Explainer listed new Chinese restrictions on dozens of production technologies for rare earth mining and separation, tightening the upstream. The same note said that, effective December 1st, foreign companies making products with Chinese rare earth materials or equipment would themselves require Chinese licenses to export those products, an extraterritorial reach that actually mirrors aspects of U.S. semiconductor controls. So when both sides adopt extraterritorial licensing, compliance risk becomes a design parameter. Automakers, grid equipment makers, and defense suppliers watched prices as the IMF's October commodity feature flagged spikes following China's controls and said futures markets implied only modest average gains through 2026, suggesting periods of volatility around policy headlines rather than a single directional surge. The IMF described licensing requirements for seven critical rare earths earlier in the year as an initial shock that reverberated through inventories and procurement cycles. Lithography is not only optics. It is motion control and stable magnetic force at nanoscale tolerances. And magnets are a rare earth story. ASML's public posture tried to lower the temperature. Dassin played down the idea that prior stockpiling by Chinese customers explained 2025 order patterns, arguing that ship systems were actively being installed on fab floors, not warehoused. Yet he underscored the structural risk persistent licensing friction could erode the predictability toolmakers need to ramp EUV and high NA roadmaps. Semiconductor users parse the 14 nanometer and 256 layer triggers because they map cleanly onto export control red lines used elsewhere. Reuters confirmed that Chinese licenses related to those thresholds would be assessed individually, with defense applications denied. That creates a scenario where a Dutch tool, an American subsystem, and a Japanese magnet assembly could all fall under Chinese paperwork if any piece traces to controlled Chinese materials or equipment. Fragmented licensing ladders increase the probability that a single missing permit idles a complete machine. Industry timelines are colliding with negotiation calendars. Reuters said the five newly restricted elements and their related materials took effect in early November, with the extraterritorial rules on foreign producers taking effect December 1st. That staging leaves a narrow window for companies to file, adjust bills of materials, or substitute parts where quality allows. Suppliers with long lead items, especially magnet producers, cannot requalify quickly. On the buyer side, the auto sector's risk is indirect but real. Reuters reported that earlier 2025 curbs forced car makers to draw down magnet inventories, and consultants warned that fresh constraints would bite faster because buffers are thinner now. Europe's heavy reliance on components with Chinese magnet content magnifies the licensing ripple even when finished vehicles do not obviously contain Chinese input on paper. European policy now threads a needle between strategic autonomy and immediate production risk. In the Nexperia matter, Reuters chronicled how The Hague invoked the Availability of Goods Act, then the courts rebalanced corporate control to a neutral manager. Weeks later, the same newswire reported signals that control could be rolled back if shipments resumed. A reminder that when a single firm sits at the intersection of security law and supply chains, legal remedies are rarely permanent. In financial markets, toolmakers and miners moved in tandem. Reuters observed double-digit gains for Chinese and U.S. rare earth names after Beijing's announcements, while U.S. producers publicized plans to accelerate domestic processing. Equity moves priced not only higher earnings, but also the value of being outside Chinese jurisdiction at a time when license scarcity creates scarcity premiums. A policy counter-signal arrived just as headlines hardened. Reuters noted that China's Commerce Ministry paired the new restrictions with language about, you know, facilitation measures and later suspended, at least toward the U.S., bans on several critical metals, gallium and germanium among them, that had been flashpoints since 2023. The cadence suggests Beijing is using reversible valves, tighten, then partially open, to test how much leverage produces movement in other negotiations. The Wall Street Journal, covering the same October rule set, highlighted the micro-threshold. Approval if Chinese rare earth content exceeds 0.1% of a product's value, arguing that such a definition turns paperwork into a default state for many high-precision subsystems. If companies accept that premise, the choice is between building duplicate supply chains without Chinese inputs or absorbing licensing as a permanent operating cost. ASML's order book, you know, really complicates those simple narratives of collapse. Reuters said third quarter bookings actually beat estimates on AI demand, even as management guided for flat sales next year. That basically implies the near-term risk isn't so much disappearance of demand, but rather friction in converting orders into delivered systems when any one permit, or say a magnet, lags behind. 
That kind of operational nuance often gets lost when headlines focus on national measures instead of, well, factory schedules. On the diplomatic front, Reuters reported that a Dutch official said this week he expected Nexperia chips to reach customers in coming days, which points to exemptions or license pathways that, while slow, have actually started to move. At the same time, an exclusive Reuters piece described China studying ways to ease rare earth rules, though not quite to U.S. hopes as broader talks continue. Policy here is dynamic because really the leverage is mutual. Europe and the U.S. want tools and magnets while China wants the revenue, the political capital, and, yeah, reciprocity on other controls. A moving target like this really undermines the utility of static contingency plans. For the Netherlands, the central trade-off runs through the same Dutch legal instruments deployed in October. Reuters' detailed account of the court ruling, suspending Wingtech's chief from Nexperia, and transferring control of most shares to a manager, shows a country using corporate governance law to ring-fence assets it deems strategic without outright nationalization. The share control mechanics matter because they create a framework Brussels can reference as it weighs EU-level instruments, including state aid rules and the CHIPS Act, against immediate industrial needs. Supply chain engineers now model scenarios under two extreme assumptions, strict enforcement with a 0.1% value test and a negotiated softening with broad exemptions for civilian use. The former implies a surge in legal and compliance workload and a premium for non-Chinese magnets. The latter suggests continued delays but fewer outright denials. The week's Reuters reporting on suspended bans for gallium and germanium hints at the second path, at least temporarily. The earlier October rare earth announcements signal the first remains on the table. Both can be true in different corridors of the same ministry. The open question is, honestly, how long inventory can buy time? ASML told Reuters it had inventory and alternatives to navigate short-term restrictions, but, you know, neither term was really quantified in public remarks. If licensing becomes predictable, alternatives stretch. But if approvals stall unpredictably, buffers shrink faster than procurement teams can requalify substitutes. Equipment makers just can't simply despecify magnets or polishing media without sacrificing yield, and, well, yield loss multiplies through customers' fab economics. One last variable entered the frame. The IMF's commodity outlook described price spikes after rare earth controls earlier in the year, but futures curves flattening into 2026. That contrast, spot tightness versus tempered forward prices, implies markets expect partial policy relief or new supply to temper the shock. If that expectation proves wrong, the curve will reprice. If right, the shock migrates from scarcity to paperwork. Either way, the bottleneck is administrative as much as geological. Across these pages, the record shows controls tightening exemptions, appearing courts intervening executives preparing, and futures markets hedging more on process than ore. If a collapse comes, it won't announce itself as a single headline. It'll look like one permit that didn't clear on time, holding up a machine worth hundreds of millions while a factory supervisor in a different time zone waits for a magnet that now needs a license number most people outside this business had never heard of until October. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. And hey, check out another video that is now on your screen.